Welcome back to another basic game maker studio tutorial and this time we're gonna tackle a thing which are timers or alarms. So I've been getting that question, Wanna Bindi, why are you not using alarms? And to that I just say, yeah, why don't I use them? Actually they're pretty useful. So that is what we're gonna do in this video tutorial. And to show to you that in a practical application, I have this guy here, once the timer runs down, he resets and then he leaves the screen. So if you want to know how to do that, stay tuned. This is OneUp Indie, I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every day a video. So let's get right into the good stuff. The setup is pretty easy. I have this helicopter thingy, whatever that is. I just call it O-Runner, because it runs away from the screen, which, well, it's not too optimal. And what it does, it's quite easy. First of all, well, it has just two events, which is the create one. So I'm just giving him a speed of one, so it will be running to a specific direction with the speed of one. And then at the start I say, all right, go in a random direction, which I just say I random range, so between 0 and 359, so basically a full circle. And then this is the timer part, I just have a timer which runs down in my step event and when it, once it runs down it has, well, I just say already are you below 0 or are you 0, then reset my timer and then reset the direction to fly to. And this is to the whole code. This is pretty easy and I did that in a lot of video tutorials but now maybe you just say oh my god variable variable blah 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 all that stuff way too complicated I wanted to have it easier and yeah we can do that easier so what do we do we basically kill all that stuff because we don't need it and do we need that nope so that stuff stays and what we can do is work with timers. So for example here, there are a lot of inbuilt things like, I don't know, speed or direction and as well timer. So once you go on add event, then here you have alarms and then you have, well, from zero to 11, well, 12 alarms as a total. And here you just say and do something. So for example, once an alarm runs down, it does something. And what do we want to do? Well, give it a new random direction, bam, and that's it. Now, how do we trigger it? Well, at the start, we can just say alarm, then say which alarm we want to use, zero, and then we just say, all right, what, how much time we want, well, to pass down until it, it does its thing, then the same, let's say 90 steps, which is one and a half seconds, so basically, we create it, then the alarm in the background will run down and then it will jump to the alarm and then saying, all right, let's reset. But this would only work once because the alarm is just triggered once and goes bye-bye. But we don't want that. We want it to do that all the time. So we go for alarm and then you just have two things, alarm get and alarm set. So we just set it. Which one do we want? Well, the zero one and 90 uh, steps. So basically one and a half seconds. Of course, you can variable, you can do some well, random range against here, but we just go for all the time the same. And what it does, it takes the alarm of its index. So basically we're saying our zero one, which is this guy here, reset it to 90. And basically we create an infinite loop. And once we start it, it's basically the same. The helicopter will try to go out of the room. So this is how you can do that. And that's the difference. Well, it's just a personal preference how you do that. But you, of course you can work with alarms or you can do what I do a lot of times with timers. And this is, well, basically it. So if you have learned something, give a thumbs up if you can. And if you really want to support the channel, which would be really nice, share that stuff because I want to grow. So, have a good one. One up indie.